Hi, it's Dwyer. It's June 30th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I'm getting roughed up here uh, online. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy it. It's all good. Uh, a few subscribers are roughing me up saying that I made Teofimo Lopez sound like he was Sugar Ray Robinson in a post-fight video where Teofimo beat Steve Claggett, uh, who I consider to be the betting side of the play, with a hedge of Teofimo by knockout, which did not happen. Right? Folks, I'll take the heat. The reason I mention it is because you have another fight that's exactly like it where I'm going to hop into water again, really based on distance, right? Now, that fight is Jaron Boots Ennis's homecoming in Philadelphia for matchroom boxing, who paid Ennis a lot of money, right? You can imagine. People are excited, right? The public's a bit too excited. I have a general rule. It's a baseline rule, right? When there's a quality fighter and you hit certain numbers, that's the side of the play I'm going to be on, right? Boxing is a competitive sport. You do have some excellent fighters. Boots is an excellent fighter. But he should not be going off at the odds that you're getting right now on David Avanesian, right, folks? I would take Avanesian if he were 4-1. to one. Right now, the casino, and let me warn people, this is a high-risk bet. No risk it, no biscuit. Right? These are high odds. You're getting David Avanesian right now at a plus 987. Right, folks? <laughs> I'd take Avanesian at these odds against Ray Robinson. You've got to be kidding. Right, let's round this up to 10 to 1, right? Right now it's 9.87 to 1. You're telling me that if these two guys fought 11 times, you really think that Boots would win 10 of the 11? I don't, right? I know it's scary taking big underdogs. I know it's scary. But understand, this is a quality fighter, right, who has fought... Great fighters. Folks, Avenician beat Shane Mosley. Right now, understand, it's an older Shane Mosley. I'll concede that. It's a Hall of Fame Shane Mosley. Understand, Avenician's losses are interesting, right? His two most recent losses were to Mean Machine. Kabalakis, right? Understand, Mean Machine to me, even today, is underrated. He's a guy who dropped Terrence Crawford. The referee missed it. We didn't miss it. He dropped Terrence Crawford. He dropped Virgil Ortiz. Let me put that in perspective. From this seat, I consider Crawford to be the best in the sport pound for pound. From this seat, I consider Ortiz arguably to be the sport's best prospect, if you can still call Ortiz a prospect, right? Ortiz, of course, took some time off for health reasons. Let's just say I have a very high opinion of Ortiz. So you're telling me that Mean Machine beat Avenissia. What that tells me is that two bad men entered the ring, and one bad man beat the other, right? What it also tells me, given that Avenissian lost to Terrence Crawford, right, in Crawford's backyard, that's the fight that Crawford got paid something like $10 million for, right? Again, Avenissian has been in the ring with fighters I think extremely highly of. So I know Philadelphia is a boxing town, right? Let's face it, even Rocky Balboa, the fictional character, came from Philly. 
right? You might recall in the original Rocky, they actually introduced Joe Fraser in that movie, right? Lord knows Philly has had a long list of fighters. An argument can be made that Boots Ennis is the best Philly fighter right now. I have him on my short list of the best in the sport pound for pound. That does not mean that I won't bet against him on certain odds. Right now, let me just say, I think Boots is haunted by a ghost. That ghost is Terence Crawford at 147 pounds. I say ghost because Crawford has left the division to haunt other divisions. I believe Annis understands he's going to be compared against Crawford. When Annis signed his big deal with Matchroom, Annis started talking about how he wanted to fight Terrence Crawford. Now he knows Crawford stopped Avenissia. I believe Annis is not going to be satisfied with a decision. Right now, Similar bet blew up on me in the Teofimo Lopez-Steve Claggett fight. Right? Okay, fair enough. Folks, uh, I'm back in the saddle. Right? I'm still scratching my head on how that Teofimo Lopez fight went the distance. I'm going to take my chances again here. You have a front foot heavy, two-handed hooker who pays attention to an opponent's body and can also take you out with headshots. That's who Avenesian is. Right, whether he's fighting in Philly, Vegas, wherever he's fighting, he's gonna be on his front foot. He doesn't trust the judges. Right, he wants a stoppage. I guarantee you one thing. Just like in the Teofimo Lopez fight, where Lopez comes out and he's on his back foot against a similar fighter, Steve Claggett. Jaron Ennis in Philly in front of his home crowd is going to be on his back foot early in this fight. The bet I like here, and understand, Jaron Ennis, 31-0 with 28 KOs. Right, folks, you're talking about heavy power, both sides of the ring. Avenissian, you heard me talk about the people he's fought. He also fought and lost to Lamont Peterson. If you remember him, Peterson was a hell of a fighter. Right, Avenissian, mid-30s, that's how he fought Shane Mosley and Lamont Peterson, fighters from an earlier generation. But understand, Avenissian is fighting excellent fighters. And he has a 60% knockout ratio. Right? So you're talking about both guys with punches here. You're talking about a fight where I think Avenissian is going to try to take the crowd out of it and the judges out of it early. By coming across the ring, and I think even a Boots Ennis, 28 KOs is going to understand what Teofimo understood against Steve Claggett. I've got to get on my back foot, at least for the early rounds, until this guy slows down a little bit. Right? Understand, he's fighting a guy who Crawford stopped. Eventually, he's going to want to stand in the pocket and trade against him. In fairness to Boots, Boots is ambidextrous, Boots can take you apart from distance. But even if Boots decides to be back foot and to take Avenissian apart from distance, Avenissian is going to be so persistent that Boots is going to have to try to stop him. The bet I like is, and this is not for the faint-hearted, right? I'm, I'm not here pretending that this fight does not carry high risk. Right, but I like to swing for the fences. I want real odds. 
The bet I'm suggesting here is David Avenissian simply to win at a plus 987. <laughs> Folks, that's just a smidge under 10 to 1. A plus 987. Hedged with Jaron Ennis by stoppage. You know the fight is mispriced. When Ennis by stoppage is going off at a minus 435. Now what idiot would tell you to take a stoppage prop at a minus 435? Well folks, I just did. Right? The reason why the minus 435 Ennis by stoppage works is because on the other half of the play I'm getting a plus 987. Right, let's just think this through. If I put five times the amount that I'm betting on Avenissian, on Ennis by KO, and Ennis delivers the KO, I do better than breaking even. I actually get a small profit. If Avenissian wins the fight, oh my goodness. Even giving away 5 to 1 on the other side of the play, right? For the minus 435, right? Let's say I bet five times on the Ennis side of the play that I'm betting on the Avenissian side. Understand, if Avenissian delivers, you've made a nice profit. That's what a plus 987 will give you. But as in the Teofimo Lopez Steve Claggett fight, I need for you to understand the risk involved. If this fight goes the distance and Jaron Ennis wins by decision, you lose it all. Be aware that Ennis in January of 2023 went the distance against Chikazian. Right now, the scorecards for that fight we're all 120 to 108. Ennis won that fight going away. Right? But just understand, if that outcome happens here, where Ennis wins by decision, you lose it all. Boxing has a human element. I believe you need to know the styles. With Avenissian running red lights, coming up, to Ennis, showing him no respect, forcing him onto his back foot, throwing bombs, looking for a stoppage. I believe Ennis is going to have to fight back. I don't think Ennis is going to have the opportunity to make this a slow-paced tactical fight. Now, Teofimo against Steve Claggett, was forced to land a career high of power shots. Believe it or not, relative to their sizes, Jaron Ennis hits harder than Teofimo Lopez, right? Lopez at 140 hasn't had the string of KOs that Jaron Ennis has had. Put differently, the fight in January of 2023 where Ennis was forced to go the distance is the only fight since 2017 where Ennis has been forced to go the distance. So just like Teofimo was forced to throw a record high number of power shots, I believe Jared Ennis is going to have to throw big time power. Right? When you have a fighter who knows what he's doing on his front foot, who is relentless, and who has the stamina, understand, Avenissian beats Mosley by decision. Right? He went the distance with Shane Mosley. And Mosley, understand, while he was a boxer puncher at lightweight, later in his career, he understood he was actually one of the hardest punchers in boxing, as Antonio Margarito figured out the hard way. Right? Against the heavy hitting, Shane Mosley, and power is the last to go.
Just look at Zhili Zhang. Look at George Foreman, who won the heavyweight title at 45. Right? Just understand, against a hard-hitting Shane Mosley, Avenissian throws volume and goes the distance against him. So this is a guy who you're going to have to fight sooner or later. Terrence Crawford did and got the stoppage. I believe hard-hitting Boots Ennis is going to be forced to fight this guy. Is going to want to fight the guy because Boots compares himself to Crawford. And this is a common opponent. Right? As long as either guy gets a KO, you're good. I like Avenissian, plus 987, hedged with Boots Ennis by stoppage at a minus 435. The odds sound preposterous. I understand if gamblers say, hey, no, I'm not betting on that fight. I get it. I'm in line to bet on the fight, even at these odds, because they match up, right? Normally, if I hear this fighter by KO at a minus 435, I'm going to say, no, nah, man, that's not my thing. Unless, of course, I hear that he's fighting David Avanesian, then I'm going to say, oh, David Avanesian? <laughs> I'm say, what? I'm getting these odds at Avanesian? Then they're going to tell me it's a plus 987. I'll be the casino's Huckleberry. Avanesian plus 987, hedged with Ennis by stoppage, minus 435. Understand the risk. If this goes the distance, like an Ennis fight from last January, January of 2023, you lose it all. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.